This is a Fox News alert on new additions to President-elect Donald Trump's White House team as more staff announcements could come at any time. We'll keep you posted on that. This is Outnumbered. I'm Kennedy, and here today, it's Dagan McDowell of the Fox Business Network, Democratic strategist Julie Roginski, and we've also got National Review reporter Catherine Timpf on the couch, and of course today's hashtag one lucky guy, the luckiest guy of all, the political editor for townhall.com. It's Guy Benson, and Guy is Outnumbered. Welcome back to the couch, Guy. I'm so thankful, one might say, to be here. Are you full of turkey, or have oh. you shaken off the tryptophan coma, no. and are you ready to wrestle I with the I am so news? happy I fit into the suit today, to be honest. <laughs> here we are. Let's do this. Okay. I had to use Preparation H on my face this morning because one eye was completely swollen shut from the sodium. <laughs> so that was wow. That's so wow. much information, honey. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely Thanks for that tip. <laughs> well, it works, Guy. Okay, well, <laughs> and more TV <laughs> tips for you and your post-turkey haze. All right, President-elect Donald Trump spending Thanksgiving working from Florida. Florida making new staffing picks. The newest name, Betsy DeVos, top to head the Department of Education. She is a top Republican donor and a school choice activist. Mr. Trump also expected to nominate billionaire Wilbur Ross as Commerce Secretary and Cubs co-owner Todd Ricketts as Deputy Commerce Secretary. This, as an internal battle, appears to be intensifying over whether Rudy Giuliani or Mitt Romney should be Secretary of State. Senior Advisor Kellyanne Conway even weighing in. And now we've got Peter Ducey live from Palm Beach, Florida. He's got the entire story. What's going on there, Peter? Well, we know now, Kennedy, that the big concern about Mitt Romney among some ground-level Trump supporters is they just aren't sure if his attitude toward the president-elect is going to do a complete 180 and go from extreme Trump critic to cooperative cabinet member. You just mentioned the other contender thought to be toward the top of Mr. Trump's list to be the Secretary of State is Rudy Giuliani. A New York Times report today says that Giuliani is now frustrated he's not the front runner. And this morning on a conference call, transition officials tried to downplay any drama. They stressed that all the palace intrigue surrounding the Secretary of State pick is overblown. But things were really intriguing this Thanksgiving when advisor Kellyanne Conway, who wields a lot of behind the scenes influence, who has made a point to call out Republicans who never really embraced Trump the candidate, tweeted what many are seeing now as a slight against Mitt Romney. She wrote that she's been getting a lot of notes from people concerned about him. And then she added this, quote, Kissinger and Schultz as secretaries of state flew around the world less, counseled POTUS close to home more, and were loyal. Good checklist. This morning, Conway was also doing her best to highlight the diversity in Mr. Trump's cabinet selections since arriving in Palm Beach. It's two women, Governor Nikki Haley to be U.N. ambassador and philanthropist Betsy DeVos for education secretary. We're told not to expect any more cabinet level announcements today here at Mar-a-Lago, but that we will learn two important staff members. So stay tuned for that. All right, Back Peter, here. thanks so much, and uh, please keep us updated if anything else happens there in beautiful Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, Guy, I will go to you. Uh, some interesting picks. Betsy DeVos, of course, uh, Secretary of Education nominee, and uh, there were some other names thrown about, like Michelle Rhee and Eva Moskowitz. But let's talk about Secretary of State, because this is the big one. We're getting, big one. We're getting a, a lot of names, a lot of trickle, a lot of conversation. What do you think is going to happen with the Mitt question? I mean, your guess is as good as mine. I'm an admirer of Governor Romney's. I think he's a statesman. I think he's someone who's very capable and would be calm and cool on the world stage. I can understand why Team Trump, at least elements within that camp, may be concerned about yeah. Mitt because he was not just a Trump critic. He was perhaps Trump critic in, in chief on the right and was really going after him very hard throughout the entire primary process and really throughout the general election as well. And he ended up voting third party himself. Yeah. So whether or not Trump holds that against him remains to be seen. Uh, a lot of people talked about the importance of loyalty to Trump. If that is the prime factor here, then you would imagine it would be someone like Rudy. If Trump can get over that and bring Mitt into the fold, yep. you know, we're talking about a, a changed ball game. Although this, this talk about how Mitt might have to give an apology to Trump in yep. order to get this, I mean, that's that's absurd. Well, he made, he made never it, but this is, this is the thing that I will say about that, Kat. Mm. You know, he, he made this public speech. It was the first time people saw an aggressive Mitt Romney. Maybe that's the case that Romney fans could make for having him uh, be our, our chief diplomat. Is, you know, perhaps now he knows how to talk to us and get things done. What do you see happening? Perhaps. It is a little strange given that Romney wasn't just somebody who, when he was asked about Trump, responded negatively. Yeah. He 
filled up his schedule with times to talk negatively about Trump. But at the same time, you know, the election's over, and I really think that somebody like Romney would better balance out Trump than Giuliani. I feel that would be a little bit too intense for everybody yeah. involved. Well, he is a, a big personality, mm -hmm. obviously, and, you know, when his presidential hopes were dashed in Florida some years ago. Now, Julie, you have surveyed the landscape here in the Northeast and New Jersey and New York for many years. If Giuliani is the most loyal person that Donald Trump has next to him, if he has been with him through thick and thin, through every scandal and misstep, why hasn't he already been named Secretary of State? Maybe because he's totally unqualified to be Secretary of State. Maybe because aside from being mayor of New York, which is not exactly the most ambassadorial job in America, very well, international city, though. It one is very argue. international city. <laughs> so is Las Vegas. Doesn't mean that the mayor of Vegas gets to be Secretary of State. It means that what Giuliani said is, well, I've, I'm qualified because I've traveled around a lot as much as Hillary Clinton. Yeah, doing business with foreign governments and doing business with ten percent of his yeah. business was with foreign governments. Fine, that's ten percent more than out it should of be. hundred. Doesn't matter. So ninety percent well, was with companies. Actually, we don't just know. To, actually, just we, to correct we, that, we don't know that because he actually hasn't released his tax returns, much like everybody else hasn't released them either, including our president. Well, that's what he's. You have to. You have to go on what he says at this point. I, he said ten percent, and he's never lobbied the U.S. government on behalf of any Listen, let me let, let, let me tell you something. He's done a lot of. So you don't have to be a registered lobbyist to pull strings and pull connections. And we all know how Rudy Giuliani makes Oh, now money. you've got... <laughs> no. Now liberals have no, no, religion no. on that. Wait, wait. What I'm sorry, Dave. Let me say this. You want to drain the swamp? Start with Rudy Giuliani. I'm not the one running around saying drain the swamp, drain the swamp. I'm not the one appointing super PAC billionaires to high-profile positions. That's not me. That's the person that wanted to drain the swamp. I mean, but you could so, also argue but, that, that Mitt Romney is an establishment well, you've got, person. you've got a billionaire who's an heiress who came into her money, who's running the Commerce Department now, and you've got a billionaire who earned his money. Wilbur Ross, who's going to be running the Commerce Department under Donald Trump. Drain it, I, drain do the think, swamp. I do think that the issue with, I, I, will, I will add that, that the issue with, with Rudy Giuliani has to do with some of the business that he conducted right. under Giuliani Partners. But what I love about this whole affair is that you have individuals, seasoned, experienced people openly campaigning for these jobs. Yeah. You've got Rudy Giuliani who wants it and is willing to talk about it. He talked to the Wall Street Journal more than once. And I and one thing that Newt Gingrich and Governor Mike Huckabee have sounded about Mitt Romney is this is a guy who ran for president twice and he wanted the top job. Is he going to be representing Donald Trump as the Secretary of State or is he going to be acting like he won, he, he won the election I mean, and not I, I, Trump? I think you could argue that that Mitt Romney is a patriotic person and that he would be representing the country and I think there are a lot of people especially overseas never who under are very comfortable with the idea of Mitt Romney as secretary of people State. that never are uncomfortable with Giuliani right. as never Secretary's ever State. underestimate the size of someone's ego and how it can get in the way of <laughs> conducting business whether it's in an office or whether it's in the private everyone matter. in politics has an ego or else you wouldn't do it and also if he had <laughs> such a big ego he would have run independently if he really thought that he were the concentration of greatness that could save this country as president, he, he would have run. Uh, it, unless he cares more about saving his money and knowing that it's complete but waste. Let, let me just say this about Romney versus Rudy, and this is what's very interesting to me. Rudy, we know, uh, Dagan pointed out, he doesn't do business, a lot of business with foreign governments, according to him. He does do business with people who are very close to foreign governments. So he did a lot of business with a Russian company that is essentially an extension of Vladimir Putin, as all oligarchs in Russia are. Yeah. So just because he wasn't paid by the Russian government doesn't mean he wasn't paid by somebody who's at the mercy of the Russian government. The reason I bring this up is because you have Michael Flynn, who does also have a relationship, financial re relationship with Russia today, yeah. which is a propaganda arm of Vladimir Putin. So does Larry King. But listen, but my, so does Larry we King. Him. Luckily for us, Larry <laughs> King's not going anywhere into the administration. Um, but I will say this. What's interesting is that for um, Donald Trump, who I think has been pacifying Putin tremendously over the course of the last year, year and a half, to appoint somebody like Mitt Romney would send a very interesting message, whether he could appoint somebody who has said proactively and, and consistently that he thinks Russia is the largest geopolitical threat facing the world. And he got mocked for it. I want to ask Guy about this. I want to bring you in here because the Russia question is huge right now. The Obama administration you know, has talked about North Korea being the biggest threat. We're going to talk about that later in the show. But how important is it to have a strong Secretary of State who understands the threat that Russia poses, like a John Bolton, like a Mitt Romney, or you know, do you want to have someone who is more of a businessman like Donald Trump, who's going to maybe work together with Russia and more of a partnership 
Well, I think you want someone as America's top diplomat who looks at our friends and adversaries and enemies with clear eyes, morally. And I think that, you know, I'm not going to sit here and judge who can and who cannot do that. I think Mitt Romney clearly, vis-a-vis -vis Russia, did and was yeah. savaged for it by the left four years ago, and he was right about all of that. And again, he and Trump don't see eye to eye necessarily on Russian issues. So one thing that I've heard a lot is, you know, Romney may be the front runner for secretary of state. If there are people belly aching about that, loyalists like mm -hmm. like Huckabee, like mm -hmm. Newt or whatever, publicly, and if, and if, shockingly, yes, so correct. But if if the Trump team decides, all right, we want Mitt somewhere, yeah. but maybe not at Secretary of State because it's such a high profile, uh, high power position. This is my hobby horse. I'm going to stay on the hobby horse until it's dead. I would love to see Mitt Romney at the VA. He's, well, a, he's then, a turnaround artist. He fixes broken things. Look what he did the with VA the Olympics, which we've talked exactly. about. He came in. It was almost $400 million deficit, and he did an audit, and he just started cleaning it up, and he turned it around in spectacular fashion. And our fashion. veterans deserve and, a lot better than they're And you know getting. what? Our veterans do, and our, our kids in school do. And Betsy DeVos, given the work that she's done in the past, huge proponent great, of charter great schools pick. and vouchers as the Wall and, Street Journal editorial page says today she's going to bust up the political cartel that is a department yeah, and of education. all the teachers unions getting this Behold, upset is beholden to the union that's, that abso that's absolutely right Kat, that, that is that is the the best uh, glimmer of hope we've They're got outraged mm -hmm. beholden to the unions and beholden to liberals yeah and, and she said that yes yeah, she's worked for organizations that support common core she personally does not that's going to make a lot right. of parents happy and having choice whether it's vouchers or charter schools can only improve education in this country so uh, you know much remains to be seen with this cabinet as it's forming. And uh, guess what a new survey shows? American consumers are the most hopeful they've been in a decade. That's great news for people uh, shopping today and selling stuff too. This is the Dow approaching yet another record high. So is President-elect Trump's win behind this renewed optimism or are there other factors at play? Plus Mr. Trump's team firing back as liberal groups push for recounts in at least three states. Will their efforts succeed, or is this just more sour grapes after losing the election? So much to discuss on this Black Friday. Welcome to it.